So what is going on my fellow collectors? How is everybody doing today? Daredevil19 here and today we're going to be taking a look at the Good Smile Company Figma The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess DX Edition Link. So let's get into it right away and start off with the box. So we do get a basic style box for Figma. We do get the window right there on the front of the box. On the top says Max Factory, Good Smile Company, Warning, blah, 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 blah. Then on the bottom right here says The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. On the other side says Figma, Product Number 320, Link Twilight Princess, Version DX Edition, The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. And then the bottom of the box here, pretty basic for Figma. We do get a cool image of Link there. And then the top of the box, pretty much the same thing, just a different image of the figure, which looks pretty cool. And then here's the one side of the box, once again the same thing, just a different image of the figure. And then if you haven't guessed it, yes, pretty much the same thing on the other side of the box, just a different image of the figure. And then the back of the box shows a bunch of awesome poses you can get the figure into along with the accessories. But anyway, that is the packaging. Let's get this figure open to take a closer look at Link. Alrighty, taking a closer detailed look, and I think Good Smile did such a great job with this Link. This figure is really dope. The face, I think, looks great. Nice sculpt and paint all throughout it. Very nice clean paint work around the eyes and the eyebrows, so good work on that. Sculpt of the hair looks dope, so I really like the way that turned out. And then we do get his elvish looking ears, even though Link is not an elf. But meanwhile, he's wearing an elf hat and has pointy elf ears. So I never understood that. I always thought he was an elf, but he's actually human. So I find that a little bit weird. But uh, we do get his blue earrings on his ears as well. You guys can see it there. And then we do get the rest of his hair sculpted under his elf hat. And I sculpt on that. And the sculpt of the hat looks great. And this is probably one of my favorite parts about the figure, not including the accessories. Really cool looking elf hat here. We do get some seams and stitching there on the sides. The other side as well. And some sculpted wrinkles up by the top of the head. And it is articulated, so I do like that very much. But really great job on the elf hat there. Now, uh, the torso, we do get his white undershirt. Very nice sculpt work all around that, around the neck there. And then we do get the gold chain mill, which I think looks pretty cool. Nice sculpt on that. And then the green shirt on the outside. Very nice sculpted wrinkles all throughout it on the torso. We do get some stitching up around the upper chest there. And then we do get these brown straps going across the shoulder and the sides of the torso. And this is actually a really cool uh, thing about this figure. I really dig the way the straps look. And the gold for the buckle and the button painted nice and clean, so I really do appreciate little paintwork like that and then the continuation of it on the back looks nice so good job with that and the green shirt looks pretty good too with the sculpted wrinkles then we do get a peg hole in the middle of his back which is for his sheath or you could technically use it for the stand but the one on the pouch is really meant for the stand and then we do get two pouches on the back here the bigger one is on a ball joint but this one isn't nice sculpt all throughout them and I do like how they painted those uh, buckles on there, gold. And then we do get his belt around his waist. Nice sculpt and paintwork on it because they did paint the uh, buckle gold, which I do appreciate. And then for the arms here, very nice sculpt on the green. We do get some stitching on the side there of the bicep. And we do get the chain mill under it. And there's a little bit of green on there, so they didn't fully paint the gold. So some of the paintwork is a little sloppy here and there, but it's not like horribly bad so it doesn't bother me that much another one of my favorite things about the figure is this like arm guard here i really dig the way that looks we have a cool little design on it as well so i really like the way that turned out and then we do get these straps and i love that they painted those tiny little buckles gold like i said i always appreciate stuff like that when figure companies do that we don't have that arm guard on the right side but i think it looks pretty cool with him just having it on one side of his arm and then uh, we do get the continuation of his green shirt with the chain mill very nice sculpted wrinkles all throughout it and then same with on the back pretty much same thing then we do get like some seams going around the edges of it on the front of the back so that does look pretty cool and then we do get the chain mill underneath it as you can see there which looks dope very nice sculpt work on it now for his pants here, uh, we do get some seams sculpted on the inside and the outside of the leg, so I do like stuff like that. And then we do get some nice sculpted wrinkles all throughout the pants here and there, around the knees and everything, so good job with that. One thing I hate about Figma figures is their knee joints. They look like wheels from rollerblades. Like, why do they stick out so far? Let's go rollerblading! <whistles> Alright, but uh, yeah, that's... That's something I never really cared for about uh, Figma figures, 
is how much their knee joints stick out. But continuing on to the boots here, I think they did a great job with them. Very nice sculpt, and uh, I think they are painted. The brown, I don't think it's the gray, I think the brown is painted. I could be wrong, though. But a uh, very nice sculpt all throughout them. We do get that cool little design again, similar to what's on his arm guard. So I do like the way that looks. We do get some seams on the back, and then there is like a string tied around his ankle there. And then the feet, pretty basic looking. We do get a couple sculpted wrinkles on the top of the foot there. And then we do get the lighter brown soles. But overall, I really think Good Smile executed the detail very very well on this link and I am extremely satisfied with it but anyway let's continue on moving on to the accessories and this is definitely the highlight of this figure the best part about this link and holy crap we get pretty much everything you could probably include with a link figure and this is gonna take a while so let's get into it right now so we do get a Figma bag of course and this is if you would like to store all your accessories in here. I would say just leave them in the box, but some people like putting them in the bag, so we do get that. Then we do get two Figma stands, as you can see here. And they usually just come with the uh, peg right here to peg into the back of the figure. But this one also came with a clamp, which is for one of the accessories. And they do swivel at the bottom. They also hinge at the bottom, hinge at the middle, hinge at the top, swivel at this piece right here, the... Uh, peg and then the clamp if you have the clamp on it also swivels and then hinges at the clamp so we do get the bag and the stands and then we also get two interchangeable hair pieces and three interchangeable faces so we do get the basic looking face here that comes on the figure out of the packaging that we did take a look at before and they did a very nice job with the paint sculpt so we do get that one there then we do get the angry teeth gritted face this is probably my favorite out of all three of them nice paint sculpt once again on it we have his blue earrings and everything so good job with this one here and then finally we get the angry yelling screaming face nice paint sculpt on this one once again and all the faces are pretty simple to interchange you just got to peg them on and off this piece here so you just pop them in and then just unpeg them when you want to switch them out and then we do get the two interchangeable hair pieces so we do get the one without the mask here, which comes on the figure out of the packaging. Then we do get the one with the mask. And I believe this one is for when he uses his bow and arrow. I'm not familiar with the game at all, but that's what it shows on the back of the box with the promo picks. And they did a good job with it. Very nice paint and sculpt all throughout the mask there. Nice sculpt work on the hair. And when you want to switch these pieces out, all you would do... Whoops, I dropped the figure. All you would do is pop the face on, and then you just pop whichever hair piece on top. So just like that. Very simple to interchange the faces and the hair pieces. So we do get that. And then we also get eight interchangeable hands. And it does come on this little set here that has pegs all throughout them. So you can peg all the hands onto them. And then Good Smile did include an extra joint for the wrist. And that is something I greatly appreciate when a figure company does that. So that is a huge plus in my book. I love that Good Smile included that extra wrist joint with this figure. So we do get the eight interchangeable hands here. We do get a pair of open hands. Very nice paint and sculpt on those. And then next here we have a left arrow holding hand and you just peg the arrow in between the middle and the pointer finger. It has a little peg hole there. And then the bottom one, the right hand, is a uh, bow holding hand which he grips onto the bow perfectly fine with. And then we do get a pair of gripping hands and all the other weapons he grips onto them perfectly with those gripping hands. Nice paint and sculpt on those. And then finally, we get a pair of fists. And great job on the detail on those as well. And all the hands are extremely easy to interchange. Really no issues with them at all. The only minor issue I found is sometimes when you interchange the hands and pop it off the joint, the joint will pop off with the hand. But all you have to do is unpeg it from the hand and just peg it back into the wrist. Simple as that. Not that big of a deal, but figured I uh, just mention it to you guys. So we do get the eight interchangeable hands and then we also get the two grappling hooks and then this piece right here that he grips onto to shoot out the grappling hooks and this thing just looks beautiful very nice paint and sculpt all throughout this i really dig that design on this gold piece here that looks awesome and i love either the i think that's a black wash that they put in it i mean that looks nice and then this bronze or copper looking color looks pretty cool it has some cool design on it as well and then we got like a chain right there, which looks cool. 
and then we have the handle that it grips onto. Now what you're supposed to do on the directions, it shows you unpeg this, and then you're supposed to unpeg this also, but I just found if you just have them grip onto it, all you gotta do is just peg this piece back on here, and you really don't have to un unpeg the handle as well. And you busted. There we go. And then there you go. You have them gripping onto it. So I feel like you don't need to unpeg the handle with it. But then we get the two grappling hooks here. So we get this one, the closed one. And beautiful paint on this. And sculpt. This thing looks dope. Very cool looking grappling hook. I don't, I don't even know if it's a grappling hook. But that's just what I'm calling it for now. I know you Zelda fans probably know what, what it's called. But beautiful paint work on it. And what you do with this is, on this end, you just peg that in. And this peg, you can unpeg it from here or unpeg it from there or anything. But this thing, it really doesn't peg in too well because it's popped off on me so easily a few times. So that is a minor issue with this piece. But if you want to use the other grappling hook, you have to unpeg the entire peg with this grappling hook. And then you take this one with the real chain on it. And then this end, we have the one peg that you would peg into the other piece that he's gripping onto and I like how they gave us a real chain with it and then we have the open grappling hook here beautiful sculpt and paint on this once again so very good job on this piece here and what you do with this is you just peg this side right into there and then there you go as simple as that now they did give us the stand with the clamp and you would just clamp this onto here to pose it however you'd want to so that's why they included a clamp with one of the stands so we do get the grappling hooks and the piece that he grips onto and then we also get the Miley Cyrus Wrecking Ball I have no idea what the name of this is and I'm pretty sure it's a weapon he uses because it's a damn spiked ball and I know he probably F's shit up with it but this thing looks dope we do have a peg insert right there so you can peg it onto the stand so I do like that they did that but, man, the sculpt and paint on this just look magnificent. Very nice job with it. Nice clean paint where the gold meets the baby blue there all throughout it. And then we do get a few spikes all throughout it also. So, very nice job on the spiked ball here. Then we do get a real chain, just like with the grappling hook. And then we do have a baby blue handle at the other end that he grips on to perfectly. So we do get the Miley Cyrus Wrecking Ball, because I have no idea what the proper name of that weapon is. And then we also get his bow and arrow. And this is one of my favorite accessories, not including the swords. Now the arrow looks dope. It is sharp, the arrowhead there, so be a little careful of that. I love the sculpt work of it, and I do like that uh, silver uh, paint they use. Nice work throughout the entire arrow, all the way up to the feathers there. So very good job just on the arrow alone. Then we do get the left arrow gripping hand. As you can see, there's a peg insert in between the two fingers. All you would do is just peg that in like so. And then there you go. He grips onto it perfectly. So we do get the arrow. And then we also get the bow. And this thing just looks great. I love the way these two pieces look. Beautiful sculpt and paint on those. And then just throughout the entire bow on the handle and everything. So great job on this accessory here. Then we do get a separate uh, gripping hand for the arrow. It's the same as the gripping hands. You just have his pointer finger sticking out. And the way you get him to grip onto it, just unpeg it from there. And then slide his hand on the handle. And then just peg the other part back in. Simple as that. So really like how they did that. So we do get the bow and the arrow. And then we also get my favorite accessories, the two swords and the shield. So we do get like a basic looking sword, which is actually my favorite out of the two. We do have a sheath here, which looks dope. Beautiful paint sculpt all throughout it. I love the little strap and buckle on the top here. That looks really cool. Dope looking sheath. And then we do have a peg right there because he does have a peg insert on his back, which I'll show you how to peg it in in a second. And then we do get the sword, which I think it looks great. I love the silver paint that they used for the blade there. We do have a little sculpted line in the center of the blade running all the way down it to the uh, handle there. And the cross guard looks great. We have some uh, black wash, I believe, on it. 
very nice looking and the handle looks dope too and the way you get them to grip onto it you just unpeg the handle from the cross guard guard <laughs> cross guard and then just slide the handle through his hand here and then you just peg it right in like that so very simple to get him to grip onto his sword and then the sword also just slides right into the sheath like that so very very cool that you could do that so we do get that sword and then we also get this sword here which I believe is probably his main sword that he uses or some sort of stronger sword or something like that and beautiful sculpt and paint on it I love the silver once again for the blade that looks great and then the cross guard, cross guard why do I have trouble saying that word the cross guard and the handle just look beautiful on this I love that blue paint very nice work on that and we do get some gold like a little bit on the blade it looks pretty cool the handle looks dope also and then the sheath actually looks great too beautiful sculpt and paint on these once again we got a cool little uh, strap and buckle on the top there and there's the other side we do have a peg since you can peg it into the back of the figure and the way you get him to grip onto the sword same thing as the other one just unpeg the handle slide it through his hand and just peg the sword back on and then this sword you can put in the sheath as well and fits in there perfectly and then finally we get his shield and beautiful paint sculpt on this as well very nice job on the shield such clean paintwork on all these accessories and then we do have a little strap and a handle on the back and I know you guys see a bunch of peg holes there so you can either have them grip on to his shield and the way you get them to do that you unpeg this handle and then unpeg it from that side slide his hand on and then peg it back in be careful not to lose any of these pieces then once you have his hand wrapped around it you just peg this right onto the shield and then the strap you would have the strap off and then just peg it right on over his arm the strap though it really doesn't peg in that well because I guess his arms a little too thick for the strap so it'll usually like peg in like that one of them would, won't peg in so that is one little issue I do remember it was like that with the uh, previous link figure that they made as well now if you want him to holster his sword and shield you can do that now what you would have to do here is place the sword right there now these two pegs here you have to get the sword in between them and make sure the peg is below it also so then you take the handle and you peg the handle into those pieces let's see if I could do it it's kinda hard looking through the camera and doing it so let me look under it there we go so you just peg that in like that so now this now the shield can't slide off and then what you would do here is oops that's the wrong side you just peg you just peg the sheath right onto the back of link there like that so you can have him holster his sword and uh, shield there which I find pretty damn cool actually and if you just want him to have the sheath for his sword on all you do is just peg that into the back of link very simple to do that but anyway that is all the awesome great accessories included with this link let's keep moving on with the rest of the review shall we now for the height of link to the top of his head or hat it looks like he stands around five and a half inches tall and then here he is compared to the SH Figure Arts Civil War Captain America, the Mafex Suicide Squad Joker, the SH Figure Arts Suicide Squad Harley Quinn, and the Good Smile Company Figma Avengers Hulk. And then here he is compared to the SH Figure Arts Sage Mode Naruto, the SH Figure Arts Final Form Frieza, the SH Figure Arts Rock Lee, and the SH Figure Arts Super Saiyan Vegeta. And then here he is compared to the SH Figure Arts Awaken Warrior Super Saiyan Goku and the Mezco 112 Punisher. Anyway, there's some quick comparisons. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review. So now for the articulation, we do get two points at the neck, but the lower neck joint is practically non-existent, which I'll show you in a second. The upper neck joint gives us some great movement with the head here. So Link can look up a really good amount 
and then looks down a really good amount as well so very nice forward and back movement at the upper neck there and then we do get some great pivot out of it as well and then it also swivels the lower neck I can't get it to pivot or swivel it only moves forward and back that much and then back as you see it's very minimal movement like I said it's almost non-existent I mean you really don't even need the lower neck joint because we get such great movement at the upper neck joint now his L fat is also articulated so it can hinge up and then down and then it does pivot a little and then it also swivels so I really like that his L fat is articulated then we do get a point of articulation at the torso around the abdomen here and Link can crunch forward a really good amount with that joint. Same with going back. So nice forward and back movement out of the torso there. And then we do get very nice pivot out of it as well. And then it also swivels. Now the waist, I can only get it to move forward and back. But it does go forward a really good amount. So with both joints, Link can almost crunch forward close to 90 degrees. So nice movement there. Then going back, he goes back about that much. Now the pouch on the back here, the larger one, is on a ball joint, so it can swivel a tiny bit, pivot a little bit, and move up and down a little. So I do like that it's articulated, but you do get very minimal movement. Now for the arms here, I really like how the shoulder joints are. There's like a ball connected into the body, and then there's another one connected into the shoulder. So we get some great movement out of both those ball joints there. So you do get... A very nice circular motion out of the arm, so I do like that point of articulation. Then the arms go out to the sides, about 90 degrees. They do go up and down. We do have bicep swivel, but you can have it swivel at the shoulder joint as well. And then it can also swivel where the elbow joint connects into the bicep there. And then the elbow joint bends in a little more than 90 degrees. It is a single jointed elbow, but you get some nice movement out of the elbow joint there. And then the wrist is a ball hinge, so it does swivel and then hinges back and forth. So great movement throughout the entire arm all the way down to the wrist. Now for the legs here, the lower portion of his shirt is a softer rubbery type plastic. It doesn't hinder the leg articulation that much, but it does a little bit. So the legs kick forward about 90 degrees they go to the back about 90 degrees and then kick out to the side a little more than 90 degrees then we do get nice swivel up there and then for the knees here they bend back a little more than 90 degrees and then the ankles do swivel and they don't really hinge up at all so I'm really not that fond of that but they do hinge down a decent amount and then we do get some very nice pivot almost 90 degree bend right there so I do like that and then we do get a little bit of a toe hinge so overall I think we get some really nice movement with this link a couple points aren't as good as the rest but most of the articulation you do get some great movement with this figure and you're gonna be able to get them in some great elf like poses and I'm about to show you some of them right about now but anyway, that is my review of the Figma Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess Link. Hope you enjoyed it. If I had to rate this figure between a 1 through 10, I'd have to give it a 9.5. If you would like to know the price and where to buy this figure, I got mine from agelessgeeks.com. He does have them in stock on the website right now. And if you do purchase something from Ageless Geeks, don't forget to enter in code name Daredevil and you'll get yourself a 5% off discount. I will put more information in the description below. And if you would like to support the channel, don't forget to subscribe and click on that bell icon. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, just give it a thumbs up anyway because action figures are awesome. But thanks for watching. I will see you later.
on the top says Max Factory, good small company, warning, blah, 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 on the top says Max Factory, good small company, warning, blah, 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 then right here on the bottom right says the legend, legend, blah, blah, and then the top of the box says a chippity choppity choopity choo and choppity chee. So we do get a basic style box for Figmia. You see the uh, continuation of his hair. Well, of course, it would be the continuation of his hair, damn it. And Link can crunch forward a really good... <laughs> what the hell was that? Damn. You came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> oh, shit. Came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs>